Uh, my name is Boubacar Kanté. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of California, San Diego. And uh, my, my group uh, primarily work on uh, wave matter interaction, basically the interaction of electromagnetic waves with uh, structured matter. And this field is broadly known today as uh, the field of metamaterials. So our first is to use waves to improve communication, to improve uh, energy harvesting, and to also help in uh, health sciences. The whole field of metamaterials uh, started with the discovery of what is called the split ring resonator. And the split ring resonator is basically nothing but a C that is made of a metallic uh, particle. So, and, and then all metamaterials that were proposed afterwards, uh, especially negative index metamaterials, were based on some kind of modification of that split ring resonator. resonator. And what, we, uh, what I discovered, uh, first I had those ideas at the beginning of my at the, at the end of my PhD, and then during my postdoc, I investigated the idea further. I was postdoc in Professor Zhang Zhang lab at uh, UC Berkeley. And we found that, that uh, we can systematically classify ring resonators as a function of the number of openings that you have. And uh, the op number of openings is basically the parity of the ring. So if you have 0, 2, 4, the ring is said to be even. And if you have 1, 3, 5, 7, the ring is said to be odd. And that has fundamental implication on the electromagnetic multiples mode that you can create in the ring. And uh, we use those to demonstrate in isotropic metamaterial, for instance, and my group is still uh, investigating uh, those ideas. The field of metamaterial at the beginning uh, came and it was all about making three-dimensional structures that are bulky. So uh, a few years after working in that area, researchers all over the world uh, face a lot of challenges, challenging challenges. Sorry, uh, regarding losses. So basically, when lead was propagating in the thick material, it was being attenuated. So uh, and then we now came back to something that was simpler, something that we call metasurfaces, and that are basically the two-dimensional version of metamaterials. So uh, a metasurface is something that is 2D with a thickness that is much smaller than the wavelength, maybe about lambda over 10. And, uh, and then this is much easier to do than a three-dimensional system. So, and recent exciting results actually have shown that we can have a great degree of control over light just using these two-dimensional systems. Uh, basically, uh, cloaking is, of course, of great importance and, uh, in manipulating electromagnetic waves. Uh, not only waves can be extended to acoustic and other fields uh, as well. So, uh, so far, people were using a very bulk system in order to cloak a device, a device or an object. And uh, in the end, uh, the cloak it itself was bigger than the object that you are trying to cloak. So that was, of course, of scientific importance, but not of industrial relevance. So recently, we have uh, transposed that system to an ultra-thin surface. So basically, using a simple thin sheet of the electric particle, you are able to make uh, an object disappear. And I want to insist on the fact that we are using the electric particles in order to do so, because if you try to hide an object and you use a lossy material to do so, what will happen is that the lossy material will absorb light and you will see a contrast in brightness. And that change of co contrast, of course, will be very uh, relieving and very suspicious. So it is of utmost importance to uh, use lossless system to do cloaking. Sometimes in the lab, uh, when I do research with my PhD student or the postdoc who are involved in the, in the research, we get excited about something that is technically complicated to do. And uh, it turns out that this is not always what uh, industry or people outside care about. So sometimes we are very excited about the research and the impact is low. And sometimes we think that the research is not too complicated and we end up having a huge impact. So I think it is really important, and this is something that I have seen uh, in the U.S. more than in other countries. So there is, we need to have a strong connection between industry, uh, researchers, and, uh, and, and companies, so, so, so that uh, the basic research that we do uh, is understood by some of us and we try to uh, transpose it into, into an application. So I think this is... Uh, Something that is said all over, uh, all over the world, everyone knows that uh, we need to do basic research to keep in advance and 
I mean, have new ideas basically that can be transposed into application later, later on. Uh, but uh, making it happen is, is a challenge. You always usually have to make compromise. When you gain somewhere, you lose somewhere else. So depending on the application that you want to develop, you will focus on some particular aspect of your device. So um, broad band metamaterial have been of interest, but metamaterial are constructed fundamentally and most of the time from local resonances. So if you want to make the system broadband, the, the recipe is to couple many localized resonances. So when you couple many of those discrete particles, you move from one localized state to two states to three and then to a band by coupling. This is exactly the same in uh, atomic physics. Atoms have discrete energy levels, but when you take a material that is composed of those atoms, you end up with a band structure. So metamaterials people, uh, including myself and all the researchers, are doing exactly the same thing. We, are, we can create today broadband metamaterial and we can have uh, especially uh, uh, application in en energy because uh, if you want to investigate uh, solar energy conversion or focus light on a tower, it is extremely important to do so in a broadband fashion so that you can efficiently collect all the colors from, from the sun. So there are a lot of applications where broadband is important. I, I was just talking about energy in that case. But there are also applications in which you don't need to, book, to be broadband. Some in some cases, especially in defense, uh, there are some reserved communication channels that do not need to be broadband. And if you can secure them, even if they're narrowband, metamaterial can still have uh, applications there. So uh, broadband is not always what is seek for. Sometimes we need broadband, but sometimes we also need uh, narrowband systems. I feel fortunate to have, had, uh, to have lived in, uh, in Africa in Europe and in America today. And uh, that gives me, uh, I always say that uh, to my colleagues, it gives me the opportunity to understand people from diverse backgrounds and also help me considerably in working with different students. So, uh, and I actually value that in my lab because I see uh, wherever you are from, you always have some advantage. From that culture, you also have some disadvantage. And working with people from diverse backgrounds really help you uh, complement uh, your own skills and, and do things that you will probably not be able to do by yourself.